There's some claims that the saturated fat C15 is as good and likely better than omega-3 fats. The company that sells C15 to the public, Fatty15, even has a comparison on their website where they cite a study comparing omega-3 fats against C15 fats. So is there any truth to that claim? Well, let's find out. The company claims that C15, this essential fat, is better than omega-3 fats that we get from algae, fish, krill oil, and other sources because it has over 26 clinically relevant benefits. Omega-3s only have 10. Additionally, Fatty15, which is the C15 containing product, repairs 2.5 times more cell types than omega-3s. And at the highest concentration, omega-3 is toxic to cells, while Fatty15 was not. Well, knowing all that, I think this is a pretty open and shut case. Buy all of the C15 that you can. There's a link in the description. <laughs> okay, if you couldn't tell, I'm having a lot of fun. I do wonder, though, if there aren't some suspicious claims being made here. The best bet would be to just open this study that they cite. And there she blows. Here's what the researchers did. They applied C15 fat to co-cultured cells. That means cells from humans were either plated on their own with different factors like pro-inflammatory molecules or cultured with other human cells. Think like skin cells with immune cells. This method allows assessment of clinically relevant biomarkers, molecules. If you're scratching your head thinking, well, how could this tell us really anything? Well, although it has been used in the past, I would be hard pressed to defend it, but let's roll with it anyway. So they apply either C15 fats or omega-3 to the media. That's the, uh, the liquid that the cells are in. Then they do a series of measurements for changes in these clinically relevant molecules. Now, let's examine each of these claims on the website and reference back to this study. Claim one, C15 has over 26 clinically relevant benefits and to poor omega-3 only has 10. They're basing that claim, I imagine, on this data. All the clinically relevant biomarkers, molecules are on the left-hand side, and the amount of change is quantified based on the directionality of the bars to the left or right. If it goes to the left, there's a reduction. If it goes to the right, then it increases. The dark bars are the C15 supplemented, and the light bars are the omega-3 supplemented. You don't need to read into this much. Essentially, if the bar has an asterisk above it, there's a likely difference. So if we count up the asterisks, it's true there are many more for the C15 condition, 28 to be exact, which is, if my first grade education is still intact, greater than 26. Sounds like the claim is correct then. Unfortunately, this is where a PhD education one miniature step above first grade comes screaming in like a fighter jet. <laughs> first off, the statistics applied on this data is a comparison against the control condition, not the omega-3. You'll see that evidenced here at the bottom. I still think that you can make some judgment calls, but uh, the direct comparisons are not actually made here. Also, in statistics, we normally like to see something called a standard error of the mean, so we can judge the certainty of the result. And the researchers fail to present that information. But these critiques, as large as they may be for a statistician, pale in comparison to the other critiques. For example, these biomarker changes tell us absolutely nothing about clinical outcomes. They may be mentioned like they're clinically relevant markers and they can contribute to clinical outcomes like uh, VCAM1 is implicated in heart disease, but there's some orders of magnitude removal from the actual clinical outcomes. Additionally, considering this is in human cells, you can make the argument that the experiment is more clinically relevant than some other experiments, but it will never be the same as, well, 
actual human studies, saying any cell work is clinically relevant is far removed from reality. And that's coming from someone who did a ton of cell work in the lab. But let's move on. Claim two is that C15 repairs cells 2.5 times better than omega-3s. Specifically, they say 10 out of 12 cell-based systems were improved with C15, and poor omega-3s only repaired 4 out of 12. I'm making an assumption, but they're likely referring to this data. I'm making that assumption because it's the only data with exactly 12 biomarkers. And while I don't actually understand where they got 10 out of 12, let's just give the benefit of the doubt. Ultimately, the same exact critiques from claim one apply here. But in addition, none of these changes in markers offer any information on the repairing of cells. Zilch. Claim three. This is a fun one. Omega-3 was toxic to cells at the highest available concentration, and C15 was not. Okay, fair enough. But while the researchers mentioned that fact too, no one shows any data. As a matter of fact, they supply some data in the supplemental material of the study, and the comparisons of C15 at varying concentrations is not against omega-3, but against another C15 product by a different company. And across the board, the values are zero. Take a look for yourself. So the claim is made, and no data is provided to back up that claim. Now, some additional considerations, C15 was compared against EPA only, so one form of omega-3 only. Next, notice who uh, wrote the article. Notice the uh, last name there. Then, notice who did the study. I'm not one to dismiss studies simply based on funding or associations, but I am one to dismiss studies if they're bad. And in my opinion, this is a really trash study. <laughs> that said, if this is the only evidence comparing C15 against omega-3s, C15 fats have, well, let's do it uh, diplomatically, uh, insufficient evidence to substantiate that they are as good or better than omega-3s. That doesn't mean that this study says omega-3s are better. It tells us actually very little in general. So the takeaway is that C15 fats currently have little to no evidence of their superiority over omega-3s. But just because there's one bad study doesn't mean that C15 fats can't be effective in general. So remember when I mentioned that it would be clinically relevant if we actually looked at human studies? Well, that's exactly what I did, analyzing seven more studies, which we'll release in a video two days from this video's publishing. And you can find all of that linked right here. I'll see you over there. Thank you.